family. So the queen can give all the money to the eunuch, knowing that the eunuch's not going to start his own family, and therefore he's trustworthy with it, and he's not going to take money and you know run away and start his own family. That's why they had eunuchs in, in China, that's why they had eunuchs in Ethiopia, right? Philip somehow recognizes this, and he talks to him, and he asks him, the Ethiopian, do you understand what you're reading? That's kind of insulting, but uh, I get, you know, if someone's trying to, watching me read Spanish books, they probably might have some the same thing about I'm, I'm pronouncing the Spanish a little off. Philip is pronouncing the Hebrew, it probably doesn't sound right, so we ask him, do you understand what you're reading? The eunuch says, how can I, if no one is there to guide me? Those are pain. That, that, those, are, those words are pain. You get it. If, you, if you're not allowed in church, right? You're not allowed in church because of how you walk. Mm -hmm. And someone asks you, do you understand that you're reading the Bible? One of the things you might say is, how am I supposed to understand it if the community won't let me in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, he, he's speaking words of pain. How am I supposed to get this if there's no one to guide me? Philip then gets invited into the chariot. Probably the first Mercedes the other side. Right? He gets invited in. He sits down. They discuss the passage. What passage is it? It's Isaiah 53, which is the suffering servant, which is the passage that they used, that they felt was prophesying Jesus. Right? And he's led, led like a lamb to the slaughter. He explains the passage to him, and he explains about the gospel of Jesus, and the, unit, the Ethiopian is quite amazed by it. And they're riding along in the chariot, and something new happens, where he sees a body of water, and the Ethiopian says, this is so powerful, what is to stop me from being baptized? What is to stop me from being a part of your community? Philip is doing a new thing. They're a new they're Jews, but they're doing something new, and they're still figuring out. They're trying to figure out who's in and who's out. And at this moment, Philip just had a conversion himself, where he realizes that he doesn't know what's to stop this man from being baptized. And so they get baptized, and the moment they come out the water, all of a sudden, Philip is BB of Scotty, and he's in another place, and the Ethiopian is there by himself. And the power of this passage is that for Philip, Philip reasoned, realized that God, through Jesus Christ, was trying to create a larger kingdom than just specific sects. That God, through Jesus Christ, was trying to create a large family of God that consisted of everybody. That God, through Jesus Christ, was trying to create something that goes beyond a specific tribe and a specific culture to affect all of our humanity. And Philip, at this moment, realized that though this man was an Ethiopian, and though he was a eunuch, and therefore he should have been kept outside, nonetheless, that God was doing a new thing, and he had to bring him in. And this was pushing the comfort zone. And it showed that the only way to grow involved the discomfort of something new. But it's because of what Philip did, it's because of what Paul did, that we ourselves have the gospel. We are not, now maybe someone in here is Jewish, we are not Jewish, we are Gentile. But we have the gospel because these men and these women went outside of their comfort zone. Have you been in your comfort zone too long? Have you only done what has made you comfortable too long? Are you scared to be pushed? Of course you might be. Realize that God might be pushing you outside of your comfort zone. And it's not a bad thing that you're afraid. It's not a bad thing that you feel uncomfortable. It's just what it is. It's part of growth. But realize that God is trying to get you to reach out and proclaim the gospel by the way you live. And that may mean that you have to go outside of your comfort zone. That's the only way to grow. This is a message for me. I'm about as timid as the, <laughs> as the next person. And uh, my name is Timothy, and I thought they named me that because they thought I was timid. I mean, I... I, I, I 
being pushed out of my comfort zone is not comfortable for me at all. But it's one of those things where you realize that God did not make <coughs> us Christians. God did not redeem us. God did not save us to make us comfortable. God redeemed us to make us able to comfort. Do you understand the difference? God did not save us to make us comfortable. God saved us to make us able to comfort. And that may mean that we comfort those who we may not want to comfort. That may mean that we comfort those that we may not know exactly how to comfort. That may mean that we comfort those who may seem like strangers to us. But God made us able to comfort. That's why He redeemed us and saved us. That's why He lifted us up and shows us grace. If you're in your comfort zone and you feel that urge, it's not a bad thing. That may be the Holy Spirit. If you're in your comfort zone and you feel like something is bugging you, that you need to get out of your comfort zone, that may not be fear. That may be God. If you haven't applied for something because you feel like you don't want to be rejected, if you feel like you're being pushed out of your comfort zone there, that may be God. If you haven't talked to someone because you don't, you fear the conversation, but you still see them in the back of your mind, and you know that you probably need to have this conversation, and you don't want to have it because you know it might be discomforting, and you know it might be painful, well, God may be the very one reminding you over and over to pick up the phone and give them a call. Have you stayed too long in your comfort zone? If you have, you might be stopping the very growth and healing God is trying to bring about in your life, in your family's life, and in this church's life. So let us be like Philip and trust the moving of the Holy Spirit, even if it pushes us outside of our comfort zone. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Oh God, we just ask that you help us to realize the power of the gospel that saved us and redeems us. And help us to realize that we cannot just hold it for ourselves and hold it for those that we want to hold it for. Help us to realize, oh Lord, that the push and the urge to get out of our comfort zone may be you. And that you love us wherever we go. And that when we push beyond our comfort zone, it is you who will be with us, guiding us, and walking with us each step of the way. We thank you that you are a God who does not let us be stifled, but a God who lets us always grow and grow into the full stature of Jesus Christ, O Lord. And we ask, O God, that you give us the courage and strength to follow your leading wherever.